So what do we do with a, if you've got a calf strain or a calf niggle, what are the things to do? So if you have an acute strain and you've got, you know, and you've been diagnosed with a calf strain or you think you've got a calf strain, the first thing that you've got to do, I hope you can see that. I'll read it out for you if it's a bit far away. My eyes aren't great either. Look, stop running straight away. That may seem obvious to you. Hope, hopefully it is, but it's amazing how many people do try to carry on and, and not respect that healing process. Rehydration, hopefully now for obvious reasons, is a really important thing. As far as rest, ice, compression, and elevation goes, look, that's fine if you want to do that. It's probably its effect on helping healing is maybe not as, a, as good as what historically thought it might be. Certainly not going to do any harm. Um, but, you know, it's your call. The one big thing I would say is anti-inflammatory drugs. This is a really important thing to know, okay? Anti-inflammatory drugs impair muscle healing, okay? So if you have a muscle injury, whilst taking anti-inflammatory drugs may help with some pain relief, it's actually going to impair the healing process. So it's really important that, that you don't take those. If pain is a problem, which it rarely is, um, then some simple paracetamol-based analgesia is a good thing, but I'd strongly recommend you getting off the anti-inflammatories. For a couple of days, that muscle's going to be bleeding, and we need to let that muscle bleed, and it'll settle down. From then, it's important that you confirm that diagnosis. Now, for most people who've had a calf strain, it's really obvious, but there are a couple of very nasty conditions that can look like a calf strain <coughs> on the face of it. Um, so I don't know if, if anyone, most people should be familiar with the concept of a deep vein thrombosis. That's something that can present looking like a calf strain. And at the risk of sounding dramatic, if you miss those, they can be life-threatening. So I'd always say as part of your housekeeping, um, do get a calf strain checked out, even if it's just to confirm what you, what you already know. They, I've seen them missed on several occasions. Um, as a general rule, you've got this calf strain. Don't run again until you can walk pain-free. All right. Once you're walking pain-free, you, uh, uh, you can start running again. But it's going to be about a week or so, possibly, until you can do that. What you can do, and again, going back to that idea of helping the healing process, what muscles do like is they like just a little bit of load. They like a little bit of force going through them. So we can do this thing called an isometric contraction, which muscles love. And I've not got a step here. You stand on a step, just lifting your heels up off the ground and just hold that static position, he says, with his terrible balance. You get the idea. That static position there. If you hold that position there, a little bit of discomfort is fine, but it shouldn't be acutely painful. Doing that for sort of 10 seconds a few times a day is probably just going to stimulate a better quality healing. If you totally rest the muscle, it's going to heal a bit slower than it would do otherwise. So again, and let pain be your guide on that. Massage, it's probably not going to make a massive difference either way. But if it feels nice and it helps you kind of take ownership of the problem, then you know, knock yourselves out in the hands of a good uh, massage therapist. Uh, you know, that's absolutely fine. The rehab comes sort of once you can walk pain-free again. Okay. Um, I would say only easy running until such time that that's pain-free. You should be back running again, and it's a bit of discomfort. Um, but as long as you can run with a normal gait, that's fine. But I certainly wouldn't be putting any efforts in. At that point that you can do some light running, getting that calf strong is a really good idea. Calf raises are a simple starting point, okay? Not rocket science. Um, and probably worth doing under supervision to make sure that you're getting the optimal amount of load to heal the muscle, but also sort of stop you having future problems. And there's plenty of other rehab that you can be doing. If you've got a strained calf muscle, it's very unlikely that you don't have strength deficits elsewhere. And so you can take this opportunity to actually be doing some good quality strength work, work elsewhere, which is really good in terms of protecting that injury from, uh, you know, from returning or, or other injuries. Once you're running pain-free easy, which is going to be, depending on the severity of the strain, it could be less than a week. It could be as long as a month if you've got a really severe one. But at that point, you're going to be real, you, at that point rebuilding your volume and your intensity. And look, you're going to be doing that under the supervision of either your physio or your coach 
or preferably both. And I think if you've got that communication between uh, your coach, if you has, have one, and your physio, if you have one, you're in, you're in the best hands collectively then to get the, the best recovery. Um, lots of people ask about taping, stretching, rolling, and orthotics. I don't know whether this comes as a surprise to anyone, but I see negligible value in these for this particular problem. Okay, so if it makes you feel happy, well, that's kind of fine. But I, th there's a there's relatively little value against all the other things that we're saying. We need to allow the tissue to heal and get it strong. 